Hey everybody, Shane back with you from Guitar Work. Welcome back. This is Pink Floyd's Comfortably Numb. It's a song you just gotta know. Um, there's always so much attention paid to the electric guitar parts, and rightfully so, like epic guitar solo and all that. But let's make sure we can play the actual song. Just a few chords and a really straight ahead strumming pattern with a couple of little, couple of little walks and things like that to keep it interesting. Um, there's only one bar chord. It's probably your most important bar chord too, so don't run away, is B minor. And if you're struggling with B minor, uh, if you've been trying it and you're having trouble with getting there, getting it to sound proper and all that, um, or if you've never tried it before, this is an ideal song to work on it uh, simply because it's slow. You get a fair amount of time to get there. Let's talk about some things that might help you with that as well. Um, so hey, uh, glad to have you back. Thanks for your comments, suggestions, and subscribing and hitting that bell notification, all that happy YouTube stuff. Um, I, I'll send you to patreon.com slash guitar work as always for three sheets here for this song. And there's two song sheets and one detail sheet. We'll also talk about uh, some of the ways you might start playing lead on top of this one because it's such a great song to play lead on top of. And uh, even if you don't want to be a good uh, lead player, it's great to know maybe a couple of scales just to get your in individualize your fingers. That often helps with things like bar chords, just to wake up each individual finger. So even if it's not something you see yourself doing right away, it's good to start your daily practice, uh, maybe with a scale, end it with a scale, just to you know get your fingers going individually. Um, what am I forgetting here? Nothing. Uh, we'll be using the fabulous Beat Buddy. I'm proudly affiliated with Singular Sound as always. We'll be using the Beat Buddy to keep us together. It's a drum machine. It's fantastic. I love it. Also, we'll get the Aeros Looper going uh, toward the end. We'll do a full length play along at full speed uh, because it is a slow song. It's coming in at 64 beats per minute and people are always asking, what am I doing on the Beat Buddy? This is the straight rock one pattern at 64 beats a minute. So you pre-program in your Beat Buddy. just. Press go and away you go. Um, so I'm going to start out B minor. This guy right here, B minor. And if you're getting some of this, ah, I'm going to try to keep that thumb low. If your thumb is up high, you're going to bend your first finger and take all the energy out of your bar. So I'm going to bring my wrist way down like that. Um, if you are getting a little bit of this, don't drive yourself crazy with that. Uh, live with it for a little while. It's more important that you can get there and it's, it tends to sort itself out. Also notice the elbow coming into the ribs is also a good idea. If your elbow's like that, it also limits your ability to straighten that first finger. So get that elbow into your ribs, down nice and low. Yeah, and I'll jump right away into the strumming pattern. It's not like there's a, an acoustic guitar driving this song along. It's uh, you know full of big strings and stuff like that. Um, but if you were to play a pattern, I'm going to reduce it to this. I'm going to go one and two and three and four and a one and a two and a three and a four. And uh, so that's basically beats one and that. It's a quick down up. Make the original downstroke a little bit louder so you get this. The chicka, the quick down up, is meant more for fill than it is. You don't want the same volume the whole way through. Like it's not very musical at all. So it's loud chicka, loud chicka, and that really punctuates the beat. Now that people are always asking, hey, what's the strumming pattern? As if it's only one thing. Uh, that leaves you a lot of room open here for embellishments, especially when you're changing chords. I'll go walk the chicken uh, before going to the next chord. I'm gonna go B minor one and a two. Here comes and the walk the chicken one. There's an A there. We'll go through it slowly in a sec. But that little embellishment it, toward the end, walk the chicken one. It helps to it helps you to get to the new chord and uh, it helps to blur the bar line a little bit. And, and it adds a little bit of tension, a little bit of pressure that resolves in the new chord. I wouldn't do it on every one, but uh, it does. Uh, first, it also buys you a little bit of time. But trying to get back to that B minor. More important to get to the new chord on time than it is to play the full four beats on the B minor. Hope that makes sense. Try to steal a little bit of time from the previous chord to get back to that B minor. Um, now looking at those chords, if we have B minor, we got A, problem there. There's a G, any G you know is fine. There's an E minor, and there's an A. We already did that. Okay, where else? Uh, there's a couple little punches. I'll deal with that individually in a sec. There's also a D chord in there. So I think we all know those shapes. If not, you probably want to stop tape. They're all written down for you on that detail sheet. Go grab those and uh, away we go. So I'm going to go B minor. It's counted this way. One and a two and a three. And here's an A coming. And a two and a three and a four. And now G and E minor are bracketed like that. They're together in the same bar bracketed. Typically on my charts, at least, that means two beats a piece. So typically it'd be this one and a two and a 
three and uh, or they're sharing a bar. In this case, you could do that, but there's a really distinct walk that you want to put in there. A walk is typically referring to a bass, a bass line. The bass line has some integrity in there. So if I go G, one and the two, on the and of two, I'm going to get rid of that G chord and just play that one note on the second fret of the low E. Okay, again, G, one and the two and that guy there. Now it sounds strange until it resolves to the E minor. And notice I play the low E string all alone. Uh, before strumming the chord. That makes the bass line sound you clearly hear those individual notes rather than washing it out and trying to get the chord uh, to the chord very quickly. Um, let me play the first two lines. I'm skipping the intro because it's just sitting on B minor. Okay, we'll do that later. B minor, uh, here's a B minor. First verse, B minor. One, and two, and three. Here's an A coming. One, and two, and three. Here comes your G to E minor. One, and a two. And now you're on your B minor. So you may have to stop tape and get that little walk together. Let me do it one more time here. One and a two and three and a four and a. And you're back to the B minor. Two and a three. Good. And just to give you an idea how that's all going to sound, let me try it from here. I'm going to go from with the beat, buddy. Here's the first uh, couple lines here. One, two, eight. Yeah, so you know, it's a slow song which gives you a fair amount of room. Uh, and if you're thinking, if you're playing, it's important to play to the original recording too because you, you, you get um, the hang of playing behind, underneath a singer. Um, so when he's going, hello, 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 is there anybody here? You got that big, you got like two and a half beats to kill there at least. So you could maybe get a little louder, so that would be this. There's a big hole in the vocal there, so fill it up. All I did was take my pinky off, the A, I play my A this way, you may play it differently, it's okay, you'll figure it out. And A to an A sus two. It's got a nice spookiness to it, so that would be one. Fill it up because there's a hole in the vocal. Don't fill up every hole, but it's nice. That's where you get to poke your head out, kind of thing, instead of just being the, the rhythm person. Right? Yeah. So hey, that that's your. There's only two types of verses in this song. There's two sections really. There's a major section and a minor section. That was the minor section because it begins on B minor. It's got that darkness to it too. B minor, B minor, minor tonic or minor home bass. It's called. Um, in the middle, I'll call it verse two. And verse two is the major verse. <laughs> Here all of a sudden, that big lift, that big lift is major. So it was minor and that dark brooding kind of sound. And all of a sudden, all of a sudden triumphant, jubilant, and that's major. And the contrast between minor and major, it's very common to go from minor to the called the relative major or from major to the relative minor. Okay, don't let the terminology fool you or uh, mess you up. Now, there's the only other thing we have to worry about in the entire song, believe it or not, there's a D. So, I mean, the second verse, there is no pain you are receiving. Same string. A, receiving, no problem. D, distance shift. Smoke on the horizon. Right here. Two, three, four. You hear that punch? I've drawn G slash B, G slash B. There's a little dot over it to indicate that it's a punch. It's the whole band hits hard there. Um, G slash B can be many things. In this song, I'm hearing it just one finger. You gotta like it one finger. Middle finger is on the second fret there of that A string. Now, if you just play that by itself, it's not very nice, but it, has, it wants to resolve. It's called a passing chord. It wants to resolve. So you do have it right, playing that way. You also see on the chord diagram, on your detail sheet there, you're gonna see the low E X'd out. Don't hit this guy and try not to hit that guy, the high E. So just cut your strum to the inside set of strings. Not the end of the world if you happen to hit the high string, but it's a little safer not to, okay? Um, so that comes in, I am right now, uh, second, uh, second line of the second verse, and this is the only other thing we have to worry about, G slash B. Every time you're approaching a C chord, 
every time a C chord is coming, we do this punch. It's coming in just after beat four. So let me play it from the D in the second line. One and a two and a three and a four. A and a two and a three and a four. Now for those of you that know timing, that's the second sixteenth of beat four. If that means nothing to you, that's totally fine, okay? Totally, totally fine. Go by feel. It's slightly after beat four. So I'm going to take it from the A. One and a two and a three and a four. Can sound strange until we get to C. C sounds very welcome at that point on beat one of the next part. So here it is last time, A, just to get the timing together. One and a two and a three and a four. I'm doing it with an upstroke. You could do it down, but it feels right to me. Do it on the up. I think sometimes I do do it on a down, but that's okay. Um, and that is it. So I'm gonna let me just play the first two lines of the verse, and believe it or not, we'll jump right into a play along because it is that straight ahead. So here's a D coming. Second verse. You are here's a D coming. Punch come three, four. G. That's it. And that's it. That's the song. So, again, there's so much going on in the electric guitar and other parts that uh, really the acoustic, you know, if you're playing the acoustic on a song, it's just nice in there. Just rhythmically. No big ornaments. It just doesn't stand out. It's just, uh, it's just there to keep time. So let's do this. Uh, there's no point playing a slow version because it's coming in at 64 beats a minute. If we go any slower than what the song is recorded at, it gets a little bit soupy. So how about uh, it's just at 64 beats a minute. Now play alongs are really, really important as I'm always saying, uh, simply because uh, we, a lot of us are not playing with other people and uh, you don't really get a, song, a sense of doing a song from beginning to end, even if things go wrong here and there. So the idea is, uh oh, I'm lost. Okay, supposing your bar chord's giving you trouble, leave the old chord early to get to the bar chord on time. Or how about this? You, oh, I can't get it, I can't get it, oh, I can't get it, okay. Get to the next chord. At least you're doing it in real time. You say, okay, I really gotta knuckle down that bar chord. I'll just throw a movie on. I'll practice going from A to B minor. A, B minor, A, B minor, or D, B minor. Just get there, right? Um, but this will show you that. But I think the other chords would be totally fine. Now, as for the the walk down that we did and the punch, you can also play the song without that until you feel in it. So if, you, if you're not comfortable with that, just play the basic chords with me and you can add the embellishments later on. That's a, kind of a better way to go because at least you're playing the song at that point. You're getting the benefit of playing through the song and you add the stuff as you see fit, okay? People say, oh, I can't play that song. I can't do the darn walk. Well, the walk is a pretty small part of the song, right? So uh, play the song. That's it for me. Uh, again, go grab those sheets on patreon.com slash guitar at work. Here comes a full length play along at full speed, 64 beats a minute. What am I forgetting about? Uh, Patreon, I should tell you, it doesn't have to be a lifelong commitment. I don't know how many, I've lost track of how many songs are up there, but there are a lot of songs and a lot of videos up there. A lot of play alongs and people have been giving me great feedback. So uh, get in there, grab a whole bunch of songs and uh, play along with me and we can communicate that in there in Patreon as well. So let me know how you're doing if you have questions and uh, you meet a lot of great people there. So I'm gonna get the beat buddy going. That's the one. This is rock one pattern. It's just way more fun than a metronome. And it's a lot of fun to play too. Now the B minor is two bars long in the intro. Two, three, here we go, B minor. First verse, here you go, B minor. Hello. A, anybody in there? G, walk it. B minor, is there anybody home? B minor, come on. A, even down. G, walk it. B minor. Again, B minor, relax. A, easy information. G, walk it, just the basic facts. B minor, can you show me where it hurts? Major coming, second verse. Hit A. D. A. Punch it in. 
coming. Three, four, C. Battle down and down, G. Battle down. Punching it. Three, four, you lift. I can't hear G. What you say? D. When I was a child. A. I had a fever. Punch it. Now I've got that feeling. G once again. Punching it. Understand. G. How I am. Here's your chorus of it. The tag we call it. Three. A. I. Punch it. C. G. I've become D. Comfortably numb. Instrumental. Big solo there. A, two, instrumental section, you're in D come, A, one, two, punching it, bow, 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 G, bow down, now, another punch coming, C, that's it, another tag coming, tag is the chorus you bit, A coming, Punch it. C to G. I'll be D. Come. Scroll in. Three. B minor. And verse three. Back to the minor. C. It gets all dark there. A little pin brick. G. Walk it. B minor. Feel a little sick. B on B minor. Stand up. A. You believe it's working good? Walk it. B minor. Going major here now. Feel it. D. There is no pain. A. You are feeling. D. A. Punch it. G. Punch it again. Coming, chorus you bit, A. Punching. G. And D. Come to me. Long D. One out. Outro, B minor. Here we go. Instrumental. Big solo, B minor. Over. Two. Three. A. They repeat this a million times. Out. G coming. Walking. B minor. Down, down. Repeat that. One more. I'll do it two more times. B minor. One down. It's the instrumental out. G. Big solo here. B minor. One more. Last time. That's the big epic guitar solo at the end. Probably one of the most famous rock guitar solos of all time on this one. David Gilmore, amazing. Hey, um, this is, I should mention to you earlier, I'm sorry, this is, uh, this is what we call a tag line chorus. T-A-G, a tag line. There's no bona fide chorus, you know, where you're singing comfortably numb, comfortably numb, comfortably numb. No, no, it's one line at the end of the, every major verse. You notice that it's at end of the second verse and end of the fourth verse. Uh, yeah, I put it in bold and in italic so you can clearly see it. That's called a tag. Uh, tagline. So somebody says tag it, it means that. Uh... And well, in there you've got your punch. A, two, three, and C. Punch then to C. Two beats because it's bracketed. G, and you're back to the G. Let me do that again. A, one, and two. This is tag. I, C, 
G, I become D. Come to the D. Okay. Tagline chorus. It's a good songwriting strategy kind of thing. Um, hey, so that was our play along. I hope to do around, go around, around, around on that and live with your mistakes. Remember, if you miss something, try to meet me at the next chord or the next section, whatever you can do in real time. It's a very, very important skill. And for those of you that want to have a look at um, more lead stuff, I've been getting good feedback on that. Thank you. I'm going to loop that section that we just did, that outro section, the B minor, B minor. I'm going to use the Eros Looper. This again by Singular Sound. I love this looper. Easy to use. Check it out. And the it talks to the beat buddy, they're connected, and if I press go on the beat buddy, it'll start recording. Uh, it'll, it's gonna count us in, it's gonna play this really cool fill, count us in, and then it'll record, and I'll, rec I'll record that four chord, four or five chord section there at the end, and, and get this, we wanna go. Go through that slowly, but let me give you an idea how that's gonna sound. So big fill here. One, two, three, oh yeah. Look, Ma, no hands. Love it. Uh, the arrow looper is fabulous. It's got a big screen on it. You can see the loop, where it begins, where it ends. I love it. So over top, I'm gonna we're gonna do this slowly in a sec, but the bottom of the detail sheet, B pentatonic minor. B is in Bob, pentatonic minor, slowly. Any of you are gonna know that. Another cool thing about the arrow looper is this big volume knob here. There, so I can hear my lead a little bit better. Slowly through, 7th fret, 10th fret on the low E, 7, 9, 7, 9, 7, 7, 9, 7, 10, 7, 10. What goes up must come down backwards too, just literally read it backwards. That's again 10, 7, 10. Seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, nine, seven, ten, seven. There we go. B pentatonic minor. I'm just gonna go up and down and go. In time with the music. So if you go up and down, just be, try, try to build your instinct a little bit. At first, treat it like a scale exercise. Scale exercise, and then just start monkeying around it. What if I just take a couple of notes from the middle of it? I'll repeat that over a new chord. I'll play the same thing over a new chord. Again. Notice when I play the same thing over a new chord, sounds fresh. Mild variation. And I'll call it the extension. Uh, you know, lead playing, um, you just develop your instinct. I'm not saying this is the only scale pattern that he's using. Um, pentatonic scales are, a sh are short forms of larger scales. The larger scales can be a bit more difficult uh, to navigate, but the pentatonic gives you a really good firm footing and it's pretty like stylistically conventional uh, in rock stuff, especially pentatonic. Um, but there are some some juicy notes too that if you're interested, we could talk more about at some point uh, that notes that you could add. What I call the extension is just, it's on the very last item on your detail sheet is the same scale in a different location. So I'm gonna go nine on the G, you'll see that nine. The numbers that are circled, those are left hand finger numbers, left hand fingers. Remember your thumb doesn't count as a finger. The thumb is a thumb, it's not a finger. Nine is 11. Now position shift, my first finger is going to go up to the 10th fret of the B, and then 12, we back that up. Here's the very beginning, 9, 11, here's 10 on the B with the first finger, 12, and then same thing on the next string, 10, 12, and then backwards, 12, 10, 12, 10, and 11, 9. And then here's your other scale. Just gives you a little bit more, a little bit more room. Um, present, it's the same notes basically, but 
one extra note, one extra high note, but it changes the location of the notes and gives you a little something different to, to, to look for. So if I just goof around a little bit, I mean the extension now. I'm back to the original edge. In extension. Keep on moving when you're playing lead until you land on a note that you think works with the chord of the moment and then just stay there and make the right bass so it looks like you meant it. <laughs> That's good lead guitar advice. At first fake it to make it until you're feeling like you, until you know what you want to play before you play it. That's a magical thing when you get to the point where you hear it before you play it. That's really cool. That's the kind of the goal of improv. So hey, that is, um, what the heck was that? Comfortably Numb. That was Comfortably Numb. Lots of requests for this one too. Uh, too many to mention, but uh, I really appreciate it. And I want to thank you for coming back and subscribing. Thumbs up if meant the world here on YouTube. I'll encourage you again to go to patreon.com slash guitar at work. Grab these sheets and many, many, many more. There's a ton of videos up there. There's a ton of sheets up there for you. And lots of play-along videos as well, because that uh, that's so, so important. Um, so, hey, have fun with it. And, uh, hey, we'll see you again soon. Okay, good. Ah.